everyone, this is Maurizio, editor-in-chief of Power Electronics News and Embedded.com. I am uh, at Electronica in Munich, uh, and I have the pleasure to be here together with uh, Peter Waver, Division President, Green Industrial Power at uh, Infineon Technologies. Hi, Peter. Good to see you Hi, again. Maurizio. How is going? Happy to see you again. Um, How is going? Yeah, I would say very busy fair. Yeah. Business at the moment a bit cooling down mm -hmm. compared to last time when we met, right? No, no allocation anymore. But overall, high customer interest and quite a lot of cool, innov innovative products. Yes, yes. So indeed, the Electronica is uh, one of the most significant trade shows uh, for the electronics industry. Probably, uh, companies are showcasing innovation, key technology. So let's talk about uh, innovation. So Infineon has recognized last September for the Federal President's Award for Technology and Innovation for its development of a new type of energy saving based on silicon carbide. So in the press, correspondent press releases, you said innovative energy solutions and power semiconductors are a core component in decarbonization and fighting climate change. So how do you envision the adoption of silicon carbide, but also gallium nitride, like wide band gap in yeah. terms of decarbonization for yeah. heavily industry, like uh, transportation, for example. Yeah. Um, I think, first of all, I would like to say that we are really proud that we are finalists of the German Zukunftspreis, which is the, is the technology, technology mm -hmm. and innovation award in, in, in Germany. And I think that nicely depicts the importance of these wide band gap semiconductors. So the product where we are now the finalists is this 3.3 kV silicon carbide high power module. And just to take this example, if you now use this device for, for G traction drives, right, then you reduce the switching loss by 90%. And that's a very good example how to increase efficiency again based on superior semiconductors. And I think that's the continued story that we always find ways to improve the overall performance of the systems. Either getting more power out of it, or reducing losses. And I think that is why we overall have, are facing still increasing energy consumption, the key, right? Yes. Generate as reliable and as efficient as possible and distribute the energy and consume it also in a very efficient way. And that's what we are working on. So talking about innovation, what are the specific innovations Infineon is, show, is showcasing in these uh, days at uh, Electronica? Besides this higher power product I already mentioned, uh, we are also proud to present the first 300 millimeter gamma nitride wafer. So the GAN wafer is at our booth, 300 millimeter. So that's in superior advanced technology on very high diameter um, wafer, which of course drives down costs. So it's not only that we improve the overall performance, but we also reduce costs. And I think that is very crucial for our customers. You can also see um, um, a Citroen on our booth, mm -hmm. um, full electric Citroen. And you see here that now also the full electric uh, car is going down for lower costs. Mm -hmm. So electromobility started at the high end, uh, the high branded, high valued cars, but it has to become affordable, right? For the average people who do not want to pay a fortune for a very expensive <laughs> car. So while those cost and efficient um, efficiencies are improving, we see also such kind of products now revealing. And maybe the latest consumer product, which is also worth to mention, is an LG aircon, where we also provide superior technology regarding also the control of the overall system, again increasing performance and efficiency. So let's talk about uh, electrification of uh, transportation. So this is uh, a key driver in uh, decarbonization of automotive. And we have to talk, uh, we should talk about uh, powertrain, but also infrastructure. So let's focus on uh, charging infrastructure. This is the robust, the, should be robust to also satisfy the request in terms of uh, uh, charging uh, of different electric vehicles. So what about uh, the different topologies of charging stations? So wired, wireless, uh, battery swapping or, or, or others. So, and talking about uh, charging infrastructure, I should also mention AI and machine learning that can improve, can optimize the charging itself. Yeah, I think um, now expanding the infrastructure puts a lot of burden on the energy net. And therefore, of course, since the grid is, has not been built for such kind of huge additional load, which comes up online, yeah. we have to find ways to very smartly manage it. And as we can see now, we overall see a distribution of high power charging piles for um, 
um, motorways, for example, for fast yep. recharging of electric vehicles. But we, of course, also have the wall boxes at home, at least those ones who already have them, right? And so you see distributed requirements all around the grid, and you have to cope with them. And likewise important, you have to manage them accordingly. We also know that the car is most of the time not run, mm -hmm. but more than 90% of this time it's parking, right? While we connect these cars to the grid, we have a very good opportunity to provide storage, a storage and stabilization based on the battery of the car. So by efficiently and very smartly manage the overall infrastructure, where also the AI aspect comes into play, we do see a huge future for growth for all kinds of semiconductor algorithms and of course our customers which need to support this growth of the infrastructure. So talking about infrastructure, we should um, talk about also standardization of a charging infrastructure. So how standardization would impact interoperability and user experience. Also changing with uh, electric vehicles, it means uh, millions of people should uh, rely on the stability, as also you mentioned. So grid capacity will need to increase to avoid also issues in this, yeah. in this regard. So what about, uh, what are also consideration in integrating in improving also uh, charging infrastructure, but from a standardization point of view, interoperability and so on? Yeah. I think um, that's a clear key driver for bringing the cost down you want to have standardized connectors, right? So you don't want to, don't want to depend on the mm. specific brand, right? Wherever you go, you want to be able to charge your, your car. That is very clear. Yes. So standardization needs to be driven by the industry. And we are part, of course, the standardization greenier where we want to go for more standardized products. That's in our interest. That's in the customer interest. But as you correctly say, we can and we have to do our best to smartly manage the grid while still we need to invest into grid transportation capacities. So also HVDC transmission lines needs to be built and needs to be expanded to cope with the ever increasing demand of electricity. So talking about uh, renewable energy, so infrastructure should be green, greener even more, I mean, and uh, we have to use solar energy, for example, and uh, so what about renewable energy in this case? Do you believe, we have heard about nuclear energy, like Amazon, Google for another application. So do you believe in nuclear like renewable energies? Mm -hmm. um, before I comment on nuclear, I would say the trend and the development of renewables is completely unstoppable because the business case is there since yes. quite a while. So based on the numbers from the market researcher last year, again, the forecast was bad significantly. We estimate much more than 400 gigawatts being installed globally and let's see what the number for 24 will be. Mm -hmm. More than 400 gigawatts was not at all predicted. Um, and same trend, of course, for wind. And the reason for that is not subsidies. That's important to understand. But it's simply competitiveness, right? Even in Germany, which is not the sunniest place on the world, you can generate now electricity around 10 cent or even below 10 cent per watt peak. So therefore, I think that trend is very clear. But, which is also a very fair point, um, the predictability and the distribution of renewably generated electricity is a challenge. And for the base load, you need reliability supply, reliability of supply. And therefore, I think also traditional forms like nuclear have a right to play. I clearly say nuclear is not renewable, but definitely nuclear is not putting additional CO2 burden uh, while producing electricity. So there's, I would say, a clear trend that a lot of R&D money is also flowing into nuclear. And so I think for us it's the challenge to manage the mix, to provide the right yes. mix for the consumer and of course also being able to keep the cost under control. And I think that will be the challenge of the future and let's see how the nuclear initiatives evolve. And my last question, Peter. Talking about sustainability, climate change, so these are great topics, probably very close to my heart. So raising awareness in terms of sustainability, climate change is important to spread the voice. So how Infino is educating customers, the community, any initiatives that will come next? Yeah. First of all, um, I think we are very aware, right, that we also contribute. We are a manufacturer, right? We use energy, yes. we use chemicals, we use electricity. And therefore, we ourselves have set very ambitious targets to become CO2 neutral. We are very good on our way, making good progress. 
The other aspect is that customers start to ask, what about the product carbon footprint, mm -hmm. the carbon footprint of the products we sell? And here we started to launch the PCF initiative where we provide very detailed data on the product carbon footprint for each part we manufacture. That has been very well appreciated by the customer. So as we speak, more than half of the products are available regarding this information. But of course we continue to expand until we cover the full portfolio. And we are also happy to contribute, thanks to our products, to overall renewable energy. And so I think also we pay into this account in a positive way. Great. So, Peter, thank you. Maurizio, thanks a lot. it was a pleasure as always. Thanks a lot for your time and have a good day at, at Electronica. Thanks so See much. Next. See you thank next you. time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.